you and Commissioner Presley voiced opposition to House Bill 825, which you're saying would would move some oversight away from the PSC uh, ways that you guys can monitor telecoms, especially AT and T. Right. What's how did how did we get here? How did this bill come out? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I found out a couple of days after deadline that AT and T had requested a bill in the legislature, and. Um, I found out through backdoor channels, didn't even get the courtesy of AT&T to call and say, hey, look, you know, you might not be for it, but this is what we're doing. Uh, so I started picking up the phone and making some phone calls and trying to find out exactly what the bill did and what it didn't do. To call it the AT&T bill really ignores everybody else that's impacted by the, by the legislation because the legislation does a few things. Uh, one thing that it does is it makes clear that the Public Service Commission would not have regulatory authority over a lot of industries that they have never had regulatory authority over. So that would be wireless, um, VoIP calls like Vonage. Uh, most customers are familiar with that. We've all heard that, uh, you know, that ad on television. All the providers that provide those services would also be impacted, and I, I think in a positive way, by the state of Mississippi saying this is a competitive business, it's very innovative, there's a lot happening here it's going to be the policy of the state of Mississippi to not regulate where there is healthy and vibrant competition in all of those places. You know, they want to talk about 30,000 customers that are regulated still by the PSC in the state of Mississippi. Um, the consumer complaint appeals process is the biggest deal to me because the majority of the phone calls that we receive in this office have to do with resolving some type of issue with the customer with AT&T. So uh, when I found out that that portion was specifically taken out of the bill, that's what I really, really had heartburn over. Every year it seems like consumers, and I'm a consumer too, you know, we all have more and more choices. So um, all we're saying is don't continue to treat us like we're the only game in town and, and let remove these regulations off of us so that we can compete the same as our competitors. You know, AT&T will tell you that, uh, that they're not, um, they're economically challenged. Um, I, I don't know exactly what their balance sheet looks like. Um, I do know they pay uh, decent dividends. Um, I don't know if that's up or down over the last couple of years. But, you know, for a company to come to the legislature and circumvent the Public Service Commission without any input whatsoever. Thank goodness we have friends that are legislators across the street and they've made phone calls and they've, they've been, you know, very uh, surprised at what I've had to mention to them. In 2011 closed, we fell below 700,000 voice lines. So, you know, um, that is a dramatic change and if and if anything demonstrates that that there's not a monopoly anymore uh, I think it's I think it's that and so what we're saying is you know it's time for Mississippi to update the law and to reflect this reality and remove the lingering obligations on our business the most important part of this bill is the removal of the Mississippians voice at the Public Service Commission to resolve their problems. We're not able to resolve every problem, but you can rest assured, if you call this office, you're gonna get some attention. Um, I can't say that about a federal agency, which uh, I guess you could call the FCC if you had a problem with AT&T, um, but you're gonna get a phone call from Leonard Benson's office, I can assure you that. There's been some confusion around complaints, um, and, and, and there, I've seen some quotes from people saying that uh, you'd have to call the, um, the FCC, you couldn't call an elected Mississippian, and so on and so on. Uh, the truth of the matter is that you know, the Attorney General's office has a division for uh, consumer protection, and that's always there. But the reality also is that the commission could still take complaints from consumers, and they could still forward those complaints like they like they do today. Has this happened in other states? Yes, and yeah. Can you give me some examples? Maybe yeah, just... well, like, okay, one of the regulations that, that we still have is this obligation to provide a flat rate voice service, okay? Um, most of the states, the southeastern states around us, have removed that obligation. Most all the states around us have done it. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, so, you know, this is a thing that states around the country have been, have been acting on 
over the last several years because the market has changed so much. And you remember in 2006, the Mississippi legislature passed a deregulation bill that deregulated the vast majority of our retail business. Uh, so there's only a few areas where this lingering regulatory obligation remains. And we believe that now is the time to, uh, to deal with that, like, like other states have. AT&T is trying to be what they call uh, competitively, uh, uh, or not be at a competitive disadvantage. And that's probably what has uh, caused this bill, this piece of legislation to be written over there. Yeah. The legislature has, has been very, very good to us over the past several, several years. And if they have some questions as to what they think this bill will do, uh, you know, don't just take one side of it, which you, most of them won't. Give us a call. Give us an opportunity to uh, explain to you what what we think it's going to do as a commission, as a regulatory body, and, um, and I'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of it.